Patricia Highsmith's name isn't a household name, but it definitely should be. Her book, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If Purple Noon is really settled into moralizing and punishing the Tom Ripley character because he's queer and because he's a murderer, that's not the case with a film adaptation like Carol from 2015. Todd Haynes's Carol is an adaptation of Patricia Highsmith's The Price of Salt, which was published under a pseudonym in 1952. The Price of Salt is a transgressive book, and of course, Patricia Highsmith felt that she couldn't publish it under her own name for fear that it would have ruined her career. In Carol, we see Rooney Mara's character, Therese, working in a toy store, and this is where she encounters the character of Carol for the first time. This is actually autobiographical. Patricia Highsmith was working at the toy department in Bloomingdale's and was absolutely mesmerized by this very high society, blonde, beautiful woman that came into the store. If you look at Rooney Mara in Todd Haynes' Carol, she even looks like Patricia Highsmith. They really made Therese's character be a stand-in for Patricia Highsmith. They have a very similar haircut. The way they dress is very similar. And a lot of her mannerisms are very Highsmith. This is such a powerhouse performance from Kate Blanchett. It's almost a role she seems born to play. Her Carol is very confident, even in a world that is out to destroy her. They're petitioning the judge to consider a morality clause. A morality? What the hell does that mean? OK. I won't mince words with you. Abby Gerhardt? As a queer character, she never problematizes her own queerness. She knows that the world is wrong for persecuting her. She knows that the world is wrong for threatening to take her child away from her. And she really acts defiantly. I took what you gave willingly. It's not your fault, Therese. The screenwriter for Carol was a friend of Patricia Highsmith's, Phyllis Nage. 
Screenwriter Phyllis Nage really pointed out that the problem with funding this film wasn't that it was a queer love story. It was that it was about two women and there was no male to really anchor the film. A lot of these studios passed on it and people didn't want to fund it because the idea of two women leading a film was outrageous. For an author's work to be adapted over a 50 and now into a 60 year period, we're really seeing a transformation of what Highsmith meant to film adaptation in the 1960s to what she means now in the 21st century. As cinema evolves as an art form, we're seeing more nuance in the kinds of stories we're invested in. And that means there's a lot more room for Patricia Highsmith on the big screen.